Hello, my hungry friends. It's Friday at Kitchen's Closed. Today on Kitchen's Closed, we are in exotic Stargard. Historic. Historic Stargard. Just 20 minutes or 30 minutes uh, east of Szczecin. That way. And on this episode, we're gonna drink some beer in a park. We're going to see a red bloody tower. And we're gonna... Talk about Bob Chastasha. Talk about my Bob Chastasha. Her so... Bob Chastasha, not mine. But, now, I have... I have come to have a new appreciation for Stargard. Now, if you watched our last video on where we went up and saw a battle of 972, I talked about how borders are changing all the time and this part was part of this and that part was that part of that and then Russia was fighting and then Swedes were coming in. And... Check out this quick little history thing on poor Stargard. So the first settlement here was founded somewhere in the 8th century. And then in 967, it became part of the Polish state under the first Polish rulers, as Poland was kind of was kind of coming out, right? And then it was part of the Duchy of Pomerania in the 12th century. The defensive walls started going up in the 13th century. And then in 1368, it became part of another duchy, like one guy fought another duchy, and then a new ducal guy came in. And then it became part of another duchy in 1478. And then... During the Thirty, Year Wars, Thirty Years' War, it was captured by the Swedes. And then the Holy Roman troops came in 1635 and kicked the Swedes out. And then in 1636, the Swedes took it back again. And in 1637, oh my God. The, the, the Romans came back again and did it. That's what it says here anyway. And by the end of all that crap, 75% of the population of Stargard was dead or gone. And that's only up until 1637. We're and then a show whole bunch of other today. stuff happened. <laughs> like, holy crap. I mean, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say. We'll just, but, we'll just scratch the surface of what Stargard is today. That's it. I, this, this, it's a little tiny town, maybe 70, 80,000 people, but there's so much history here. So come on. Let's go. The city walls of Stargard were built between the 13th and 16th century. If you look at the map of, of Stargard in the olden times, you'll see that the city was ringed by a wall and a series of towers and gates going into there. The walls are eight meters tall in most places and anywhere between 1.5 and two meters thick. That's a thick wall. How much is two meters? I am almost two meters. So it's me thick. Not me thick, but me thick. You, you get what I'm saying. There are only three major gates remaining, the Pejitze, the Mill Gate, and the Rampart Gate. This is one of them. This is the Pejitze Gate, the biggest and most beautiful in all of Pomerania and all of Poland, according to the information on the wall. It's always the best and the beautiful. To this day, there are only four towers remaining. One of them is gonna be the Red Sea Gate that we will see later on in our little thing. But you might see them as we walk around, dotted around the city as well. That's where defenders would look out into the vast outside and see if bad guys were coming up, and then shoot down upon them with great vigor and anger. 
On the inside of the walls, there were wooden ramparts in which the defenders could walk and come and shoot down upon them. We'll go see if there's any models standing. I believe there is in some of the things. But here's like a little montage of some of the beautiful fortifications, towers, and gates. Bridge from here. Okay, we can see the bridge. Over the, uh, over the river Ina. And I'd cross that bridge and come this path and to go downtown and get sweet buns. Sweet buns? With my grandma. Aww. And she just lived down the way. That's cool. Bob to Stasha? I want to go there, but I can't yet. Because why? Because I'm going to start crying. I don't want you crying. Nobody wants you crying, baby. Come on. Let's not go there then. Someday we will go to St Bob Tastasha's house and show you the garden and things. But not today. Not today. We'll work on that. <laughs> oh yeah? <laughs> this is where you went? Yeah. So from Stasha's house, to the Tsukirnia right here. So many memories, my love. That's a big church. This orange building? Behind the building. The building behind this building. Oh, so this is just rando building. Guard house. So standing directly behind me, or I am standing directly in front of it, is Stadtgard City Hall. It was uh, built in stages starting from the th end of the 13th century uh, and then the poor thing burnt down in 1635. And they say at the end of the 13th century because when it burnt down in 1635 in the great fire of Stadtgard in 1635, there's so much history here guys, I can't wait to tell you what I've learned about this place. Anyway, this was also the archive building. So all the archives went up too. So they lost a lot of information about this, this town and area and its inhabitants and things like that. So then they rebuilt it. 
And then WWII came along and the poor thing was leveled again, which they have since rebuilt into its original state. Who knows what is originally originally back in the second half of the 13th century, but this is how it is right now. And above it, to the right, you can see the crest of Stargard, which is a griffin, I think those things are called. It's like a meow, but it has a beak or an eagle head. And then I believe that's the river Eb? Ina. Ina, not Eb, Ina. So that's the, uh, the beautiful building. Let's see, let's see something else. So standing right next to the town hall was this greeny building right here with these cannons in front of it. And I said, well, what are the cannons for? Well, this used to house the guards for Frederick Wilhelm I when he used to be in this area. When was this? Ah, 16... It was constructed in the 18th century. Now, there's not a lot of data on this stuff, so I'm going off of what I can find. Anyway, it burned down, it was destroyed during the war, and then rebuilt in the 1960s back to its original facade that you see today. So that's good. What is he? A conductor of trains? The center of downtown Stargard circles around this. This is St. Queen St. Mary's. Queen of the World Collegiate Church. That is an impressive name. So it was started in 1292 and then was constructed all the way in different forms all the way up to the 16th and 17th century. Again, it, it had some damage in the war but has been since repaired. And I think buildings like this really are ongoing constructions from when they start in the 11th, 12th century for forever because they're so massive they need so much maintenance that you never know when they really get done building you know and then you have things like poor notre dame who burns and then they get rebuilt that happens over the centuries but from what i understand it's one of the most impressive churches in all of poland and one of the most it is the most uh impressive church in zachodniopomorski it's the state so it's zachodnio is west and Pomorski is like Pomerania, so West Pomerania. It's kind of like um, the Fresh Prince. In West Pomerania, born and raised. Uh, no, it's not. But anyway, so this is one of the big churches. I don't think we can go in. I think they're doing some... <laughs> I don't know if we can go in or not. It is an actively working church, and I think they're doing some construction inside, and there's pandemic and all kinds of things. I don't know. Maybe we can. We'll find out. It does, but I know they're doing some construction on the other side, and they have some um, um, containers and things over there that, I don't know. Should we go check it out, see if we can get inside? Check it out. Okay, let's go.
So in that old building right behind you, there used to be a an old uh, washing facility for the big army barracks that are here. Oh yeah, that was a laundry facility? Yeah, and when my mom was like in kindergarten age, my grandma worked here and she would, and they lived just over there and they would come to, uh, through here and mom would hang out in the back with grandma. We used to walk through here to go to the house. When, so after WW2, my grandma was telling me since this used to be German land and after the war the, the government was trying to fill it with people, I guess, they, grandpa came here to Stargard and there were just empty homes everywhere. Well, because the Germans evacuated yeah, or Germans, were pushed out yeah. anyway. The Germans left and there were empty homes. So you just walk around, find one you like, and pick one. <laughs> so they picked this apartment, or Grandpa picked an apartment, and an old building, which we'll go to someday. And then my grandma joined them later. And after the war, she was like 18. And they lived in the same building until she was in her early 80s. That's crazy. And once the government set up all the kind of offices and stuff, you go to the city hall, city office and say, this is my address. <laughs> and then they record you. You don't own the building or the apartment, you just... Oh really? You didn't own it? You didn't own it at first. You were just registered and then what, later on you bought it? Later on the city made it available for purchase for people who, like the, the people who lived there had the first hand to uh -huh. buy it. And then if you weren't interested it would go under auction. <laughs> and wow. My uh, grandparents really bought it not until probably uh, late 90s maybe 2000 early 2000s jeez no kidding yeah. i didn't know it was that late that they actually purchased yeah. it but they lived there like rent free and everything until they purchased they, it they, they had to pay uh like association fees oh okay that's not so bad and then, then huh? electrical and you know, all that oh wow ha huh. there's some other knowledge no that's no knowledge from from uh Chocha Aja. Cho Chocha And by the way, so I'm up until now I've been calling this lovely woman Anna because that's that's her 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 given name, but nobody calls her that. Everyone calls her Aja. I call her Aja. So it goes Anna Aja Ajula Ajulka Sraja Srajula. Any of those is this beautiful person here. I never call her Anna. If I do, she's in trouble. So I've been in trouble a lot. <laughs> so if you hear me call her Aja, that's her name for me. Uh, well, that's her name for everybody that knows her. And then uh, our pet names for each other is what? Schmeini. Schmeini. <laughs> so if you hear Schmeini, that's our pet names for each other. Please hold your vomit. Please hold your vomit, yeah. It went from honey to heiny to Schmeini. It was a development through the years of our mirage. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you.
if you haven't been to Stargard in a long time, you will not recognize this place. This is where the city market used to be, with the stalls, with the metal stalls and the metal roofs. And people from all, farmers and people from all around the area would come here every Tuesday and Friday, I believe, for market day. And they built this mall here in probably the last decade or so. Should we go inside? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What did you find at the mall? When they're building the mall, they found some walls from buildings that were here in 14th and 15th century. Some basement walls. Cool. We don't have that many malls in America. No. Getting a little rest over here by the uh, Red Sea Tower, are you? Yeah, I'm the guard. A little. Ooh, you're guarding. You're good guarding. Will you hold this device while I tell the fine people about the Red Sea Tower? What do you know? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you right now. And it's not because I'm looking at this plaque that's over here. This here is the Red Sea Tower. Now the Red Sea Tower, according to this plaque, is the most impressive tower in all of Poland which is pretty good. I think it's kind of like the greatest cup of coffee you see like in the world New on New York. This is the greatest cup. Well, this is the most impressive tower in all of Poland. Okay, it's 34 meters tall and was constructed in the year 15 Hondo. Now, the special part about this and why it's called the Red Sea Tower is because of a particularly bloody battle that happened around it during the 30 years war. But as it is with most things in this time period of the world, there's also another theory that it says right here, other stories say that convicts were thrown off the top of it as punishment. And it would make red marks on the ground when they hit because of the splat. Oh, the Red Sea? Yeah. The base of the tower was used as a dungeon until 1860. Uh, and then it wasn't anymore. They moved the dungeon someplace else, apparently. Yeah. I don't know, but that's pretty cool, the Red Sea Tower. Hmm. Let's go look at other towers. So I want to show you a, a neat thing about defensive structures in general back in this period and even before starting 11th, 10th, 12th, 13th centuries when castles and fortification walls started is you had to have a way to get in and out of the city that you were protecting, right? Makes sense. So you put gates or as in Polish they're called brama. But when you want to defend it from above, you'd have portcullises or gates on either side of this. But if your bad guys get through here, if you look up right here, push the button up. Can you see that wood? Yeah. This is what is called a murder hole. So you have the defenders up there pouring everything from liquid hot magma, not magma, liquid hot uh, molten like tar or flammables or rocks or anything they could do to fortify. They would stop you there and then murder you in here. <laughs> Yeah. So part of a defensive fortification wall and castles and castle walls and the castles, the castles and the big walls that went around all these big cities back in the medieval medie 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 times all over the world had these wonderful firing slits to go from. Now, depending on the country and the castle and the time, they might be longer, wider, deeper. There are some castle walls that are 12 feet thick. These are not that thick, okay? But what the purpose of this is, is I can see from 
a wide field of view with my bow, arrow, rifle, whatever I'm gonna shoot at the bad guy with. But if we go on the other side, if you, if you can see from this side, if you're the attacker guy, you only have that much you can see. So as a defender, you can see the bad guy, but the bad guy can't see you. They're really smart. The only problem with these is then cannons came around. And after cannons came around, came rifled cannons, and they punched right through this stuff. So that was the death of defensive walls. But it's pretty cool still. Walled cities are so cool to me that this amount of history survived. So much DNA. In oh yeah, walls. big time. Yeah. And, and you can see the reconstruction efforts. If you see the gray stones, big fat gray stones at the bottom, and at the top, there is mortared in red brick. Well, the red brick is new construction. It's, it's restorative to keep it from falling down. Yep. I just think about the people that built this back in the 12th century and what their lives were like. And most of them spent their lives building this. You know, they, they start these structures, these walls, these churches, when they were kids, work on it their entire life, and then die, and it probably still wasn't finished. Amazing. So this is the Brahma Mwinska, or the Mill Gate, first built in the 15th century. The two towers were once connected by a wooden bridge. Now later on in the 18th century, the wooden part was taken down and a brick structure was built as you can see it here now. Now this was part of the defensive forces of Stargard, and this was a gate coming into the city and out of the city. Now as a defensive nature, if you wanted to lock the city down, a portcullis, or massive woodeny, irony gate of death, would come down on either side, and it would block entrance of boats coming in and out of the city. This is the last one in Poland, and it's one of only two left in Europe still standing. So it's pretty special. Now I think it's food time. Food time. Food time in the city. Must have got. Oh, hey, beautiful. So we are in this gorgeous Stargard Brewery. This was, uh, this is a historical building that was renovated recently in the last couple of years, maybe. They've done a great job on bringing it back to life. The inside is absolutely beautiful. They make their own beer. They have an awesome menu. We've eaten here before. Sadly, it's still closed for indoor dining. So we've ordered some food to go and we've ordered a couple of beers that they make here. I'm gonna take it to the park and we're gonna eat it there. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yay! Yay!
We've scored some food. We did. That's not gas oh, station oh, food. Oh, thank you. So there's this restaurant behind us. It's called... Stargard Brew Pub, I think. Yeah, Stary Brovar. Which means? <laughs> what does that mean? Miejski, Miejski Brovar. Uh -huh. City Brewery Stargard. And uh, we've been here before and it's That's really... yours. Is it? Maybe not. She said yours is on top. <laughs> nope, that's mine. We've been here before and the food is pretty awesome. The restaurant itself looks really nice on the inside. They've put a lot of effort into renoing it. And we didn't think it was going to be open, but it is. So we got some takeout and some home brews. Can you open this? I'm you're just so, ne you're just so needy. Drink alcohol outside. I'll pay the but fine. I don't care. I'll pay the fine. There you are, my love. Cheers. Cheers, and I have a zero beer poured into this because I'm driving. Well, that's mm. good zero. This is my wonderful Cuban Sammy. Um, with some, with a kern. You see the side view? Pickles and all Gorgeous. that deliciousness. And I got a herring sandwich. Woo! That's quite pretty. Because I like herring. And it looks like it's got capers and eggs on it and red onions and pickles. All my favorite things. And no napkins. I was going to... <laughs> Literally zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're hurting for certain then, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating my beard along with it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. So we're going to eat. I don't think we're going to talk too much while we eat. Maybe we will. I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of gross when we eat and talk to you. But if it's not, then we'll, you know, I guess you can just fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so know. I found... I don't know how to do this. When we first came to Stargard to visit her folks, they lived here for a little bit, and her grandma, I, uh, I always thought this town mm. was a little sad. The downtown area that we didn't show you, the new, the new portion of it. But the more I've walked around the city today and seen all the beautiful historical parts of it and the, the old town, I have a new appreciation for the city. It truly is pretty. It is. Yeah. And Thank you for bringing me here. Damn it. My Son of a Bin Laden. No. <laughs> I'm full. How was the sandwich? It was tasty. Super tasty. That was a really good Cuban. They, they found... You know, you need yellow American-style mustard, is what I call it, for a good Cuban. And they, you usually don't find that in Poland. They, they had it. I don't know where they got it, but it was good. The pickles were amazing. The, the pork was amazing. It was great. It was great. I loved it. Ciabatta bread was awesome. Yeah. Stargard Brovar did good. Yeah. I had a herring sandwich with um, eggs, pickles, capers, and then a tiny... Pearl mushroom, not mushrooms, onions, onions <clears throat> pickled onions, nom, nom, nom. and some kind of sauce, probably tartar sauce. <laughs> probably tartar. And it was great. It wasn't like, I was afraid it was going to be just one long, huge piece of herring. That's too much herring. Yeah. It was nice, thin slices. Bite size almost, mm -hmm. eh? It was good. Nice, dark, bright bread. And um, they, they have a pretty extensive menu. They have su soups and salads. For appetizers, they have tart, beef tartare. Tartare. Mm -hmm. And they have salads, and uh, they have pastas, and they even have paprikash for an appetizer oh. as well. Smalets with apple. I like smalets. It's porky goodness. They have fish, and duck, and pork, and burgers, and T-bone. I'd be keen to try the steak here. And they have, you can order uh, pickles for a side. Perfect. Now, when we ate here before with our friends, we had this, we ordered like a, a party platter of different charcuterie. 
and things. It was awesome. It was amazing. So, um, Mieski Brovar of Stargard, if you're watching this, we'd like to come back and film in your restaurant when everything's open and show the people of the world how awesome your restaurant is. Yes. So when we call and ask, know that we like <laughs> you already and we want to show good things. <laughs> <clears throat> so what, what would you give Brovar, uh, Mieski Brovar Stargard? Uh, from this, I would give them a 9 out of 10. And the only reason it's not a 10 out of 10 is because I think for me a 10 is if I almost have an emotional event to yeah. get a 10. Like I almost cry. You know what I mean? Right. I agree. So it's rare that everybody's going to get a 10 on but me. But this but is But I give high. it 9 brovars. Yeah, this is high. It's really good quality food. I'm happy. And and no, we, we didn't give us the food. A lot of you naysayers mm. out there. We buy our own chow. That way if we don't like it, we can say whatever we want. Mm -hmm. We're not, uh, and, bo and hold, we're not, nobody can tell us nothing. <laughs> and it's a brewery, so they get an additional point. And they do get an additional point, but it's still at nine for me. <clears throat> okay. How about you with your sandwich? I like the sandwich. I like this lager. I haven't tried it yet because I'm driving. It's tasty. And I know a lot of you will say also, just have a sip. I'm telling you, in Europe, they don't mess around. Yeah, you can, can almost have zero blood alcohol. Otherwise, you go to prison or something bad. Not right away. Oh, well, I still don't want to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, friends, that's our episode. Thanks for tagging along. Make sure you join us on Mondays when she's in the kitchen cooking all kind of good stuff that keeps me well insulated. And then on <laughs> Fridays, uh, we'll be out and about doing stuff again. We're back on track with filming, so stick around. Visit us on Instagram at Polish Your Kitchen, uh, on the YouTube, Tube of Views. Give us a like. Give us a like, subscribe, please. Leave a nice comment if you want. If you want to leave a cranky comment, go ahead too, but... You know, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> um, so jump on the... Me? No, no, not I'm yet. not done yet. Oh, sorry. www.polishyourkitchen.com. <laughs> Check out the merch store. Uh, this lovely lady is working on a cookbook that's going to be awesome. So uh, stick around for that, and thanks for... Cheers! 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 Bye! Don't <laughs> <laughs>